Something you might not have known about me is that I love Halloween. I love Halloween so much that I actually start putting up my decorations on September 1st every year. Now, I love pumpkin recipes almost as much as I love Halloween. So today I'm sharing with you Six Sisters top 10 recipes that are made out of pumpkin. Now the first recipe I'm making is no-bake turtle pumpkin pie. And as you know, no-bake is my favorite. Now you can be really fancy and make your own graham cracker crust, but this is a game changer. Now on the bottom of our graham cracker crust, we're gonna add about a third cup of caramel. Can you see that? Yeah. And we're actually just going to pour it whoop, all over, pretty much until it is covered. Then I kind of just spread it around a little bit. Guys, that's gonna be amazing. Ooh, I'm excited. Next, I'm gonna take a half cup of pecans. Now it says chopped. These are still some bigger chunks because I like it that way on my turtle pie. So you're just gonna spread these into your caramel or caramel or whatever you wanna call it. Don't judge me, just know that's what it is. It still tastes the same. Next, we're gonna add two packages of vanilla pudding mix. So these are 3.4 ounces, so you're gonna add two of these. So it'll be just over like 6.8 ounces. Then you're gonna add one cup of milk to the pudding. Then just go ahead, mix this all together. It's gonna be thick, that's how we want it. Then you're just gonna add one cup of pumpkin puree and we're just gonna mix this all together. Okay, this is pretty mixed. Now we're just gonna add about one teaspoon of cinnamon and a half teaspoon of nutmeg. We're just gonna add some flavor to this. Mix it all together. Then you're just gonna slowly put this on. Now the caramel is really loose and soft, so you kinda wanna do it in chunks so it will be easier to spread. All right, then we're gonna put about a cup and a half or so <laughs> of Cool Whip on or whipped cream, whatever you like. I love Cool Whip. That's my favorite thing. You're just gonna gently spread this all over the top. All right, so then we're just gonna put this little lid on, then we're gonna refrigerate it for two hours. We want everything to just combine together. All right, let's cut into this. Oh man, I'm so excited. Oh, that thing is thick. Oh, can you see that? That looks so good. So now we're just gonna add a little more pecans on top. If you like those, no pressure. If you don't, you don't have to add the little extras. And then I like to add just a little bit more caramel. All right guys, time to taste test the turtle pecan pie. <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Mm. Now you don't need very big pieces because it is rich, but it is good, definitely ranking this a five. All right, the next recipe is our three ingredient pumpkin cookies. This is my go-to after school snack for my kids. First, we're gonna add about 15 ounces, so about a half a can of this big one, this is 30 ounces, of pumpkin puree. Not pumpkin by mix, pumpkin puree. Then you're gonna add one package of spice cake mix. Ooh, probably should have gotten a bigger bowl. That's okay. We're gonna see if I can do this without spilling everywhere. And then just a cup of chocolate chips. I like to use milk chocolate chips, but you can use whatever kind you like. And I am eyeballing, so probably doing more than a cup, because really, you could always have more chocolate chips. Sarah wanted to test out some of the dough. You wanna try a little bite? Okay, go ahead. Mm. What do you think? A bit sour. A bit sour, okay. There you have it. <laughs> All right, so my secret with these cookies is to use a cookie scoop. It makes your life so much easier. But if you don't have one, that's okay. You can just scoop it with a spoon. Here, I'll show you. Scoop it with a spoon and then just kind of put on a blob, just like that. It will work either way, but I love the cookie scoop because I don't have to touch anything. It's super easy. So usually if I'm giving the cookies away, my secret is I'll put a few chocolate chips just on top to make it look, you know, like there's tons in there. And it just makes them look better. We're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for about eight minutes. We have our pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Now, I probably cook them for another minute or two. They're kind of mushy, but I like them that way. Mmm, so good. I'm gonna give these a four just because I probably should have cooked them longer, so that's that's my fault. 
So I'm making my pumpkin pie filling and I've got a large glass bowl and the first ingredient is one 15 ounce can of pure pumpkin puree. The next ingredient is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now I'm adding 1 4th cup of light brown sugar, two large eggs, as well as one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now for the spices, I'm adding one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Then I'm just gonna mix this together until everything is well combined and the filling is smooth. Now that our filling is done, we can pour it into our pie crust. I'm just using a nine inch store-bought pie crust, but if you have a homemade pie crust that you love, it would work great for this recipe. And then I just put the pie on a large baking sheet and I've cut a few strips of foil that I'm loosely covering the crust with. I don't want my crust to be burned and so I put this on in the beginning to kind of cover it so it cooks a little slower than the rest of the pie and then I'll take it off towards the end so the crust gets nice and golden. But you could put it on halfway through if you feel like your crust is too dark. Then you put it in the oven at 425 degrees for about 15 minutes. Then reduce the oven temperature to 350 and bake for 35 to 40 more minutes until it's done. Serve with a little whipped cream and enjoy. So first you're gonna crack your eggs and put four of them into a bowl. Then add one and two thirds cup of sugar. Next you're going to add one cup of vegetable oil then a smaller can of pumpkin. So this comes in two sizes, the big can, the smaller can. You're gonna add the smaller can, which is about 15 ounces, and just put that all in with the rest of it. Then mix it really well. So then you're gonna add your two cups of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder. Now these are your dry ingredients. You can sift them all together, but I just throw them in. And then just one teaspoon of baking soda. Then I have my cinnamon, so it's two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and then just one teaspoon of salt. You don't have to use the whole teaspoon. I did about half a teaspoon. Then mix it really well. Then I have a nine by 13 pan that I'm gonna spray with cooking spray, and then just dump your batter into the pan. Then spread it around so it's pretty even and then you're gonna stick it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Once you're all done baking it, you're gonna take the other end of a wooden spoon or a fork and poke holes in it. I like the bigger holes because then when I drizzle my caramel on top, it seeps into this cake a little bit better. Then spread the caramel around the best you can, getting it into the little holes. Now let's make the frosting. So I have a container of Cool Whip and I use the whole entire container. Next, I use cream cheese. I use not the fat-free kind because it mixes a little bit better. Then just add two cups of powdered sugar and mix it with your beaters. Mix it for about two minutes till it's nice and smooth. Then you're just going to put it on top. You wanna to make sure that your cake is pretty much cooled when you do this or else it will melt down into the holes with the caramel and then just spread it around the best that you can. Then I like to put crushed pecans on top along with a little caramel drizzle as you're serving each individual piece. Let's get started. The first ingredient you'll need is a spice cake mix. To that, you'll add one 15 ounce can of pumpkin puree and then stir it until it's pretty much smooth. Refrigerate this mixture for about 30 minutes until it sets up a little bit and it's easier to roll. From there, spray a mini muffin tin with cooking spray or olive oil and then take about a one inch ball and roll it in melted butter until your muffin tin is totally full. Bake these at 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. They should easily pop out of the muffin tin with a fork or a spoon. Then we like to top them with powdered sugar. Are you ready? We got a lot of ingredients. Let's do got this. a lot of ingredients, but most of the things that you have. So here we go. We'll dive in. We'll start with one can of pumpkin puree. So it's a 15 ounce can. I'm gonna use the whole thing. Nice. 
While you're dumping that in, I'll dump in the sugars. Okay, so three-fourths cup of white sugar, three-fourths cup of brown sugar. There you go. Okay. Cream that together. Cream that together. While you're creaming, I'm gonna add your eggs too, so it'll make Perfect. it a little easier. So just three eggs here. And then half a cup of oil. While you're mixing, I'll just add it for Perfect. you. Perfect. So while you're mixing that up, I'm gonna just add a half a cup of sour cream. And I am gonna just kind of eyeball this a little bit. You can measure it. Those of you who love to measure, that's great. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna continue with our liquid stuff. So we got about two tablespoons of orange juice. I love orange juice. It's nice kind show. of a funny thing in this recipe, right? I thought it, it was so good. strange, but the citrus is good. Right, and then we're just gonna add about a half a tablespoon of molasses. And I love molasses. Yeah, too. It's the best so smell. Good. Now we added a little bit more because we knew this was gonna happen. It's gonna stick to the sides, yep. so we'll get out. About a half a tablespoon or so. All right, next we're just gonna do one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, is that all our liquid stuff? Yep. Okay, looks good. Now we're getting into the all the dry. So we have half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Dump that in. Half a teaspoon of ground cloves. Which is the best smell. I know. It's like Christmas blossom. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then just two teaspoons of cinnamon. Okay. So then we have one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of baking powder, and then just a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay. Whew, got all the little spices. Done, done. Now the last part is the flour. Yep. We're just gonna dump in three cups of white flour. There you go. Good Beautiful. luck mixing. Probably need a bigger right. bowl. Mm -hmm. No, this is perfect. Let's just fold it in. While you're folding, I'll just nibble on the chocolate chips for a minute. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add about two cups of chocolate chips. Now I am gonna use a little bit more than two cups. We have another bag here because Yay. I I love to top it with chocolate. Lots of chocolate chips on top because that way every bite you get a lot of chocolate. <laughs> I'm a purist. I like it plain. <laughs> what, really? I do, I love pumpkin <laughs> bread with no chocolate chips. <gasps> purist, that's what I'm gonna, gonna go with the purist. Now. The purist way. Okay. Oh, it looks good. It's ready. Yes. We're gonna cook it a few different ways. Yep. Now, I've made this lots of different ways. So you can cook it in a loaf pan. It will make two loaf pans. Yes. Or it will make six mini loaf pans. Or it will make 24 kind of big muffins. Yeah, big muffins. Big muffins. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I like to switch it up a little bit. So yep. we're gonna do a loaf pan and then three mini loaf pans. So you spray it really good, because, yeah, we don't want it to stick. You That's could also worst. like grease and flour it if you feel yes, like it. Whatever you want to do. Slowly start putting it in. So I'm gonna do just half the half of the batter. Okay, that's about half. Okay. Yeah, what do you yep. think? Perfect. And now these three little ones. Okay. So we're gonna cook these at 350. The yep. little ones are gonna cook for like 40 minutes. Yeah. And not not much longer. Big one will cook for 40 minutes, then you're gonna cover it and cook for another 10 to 15. Just watch it. You just wanna make sure it's not burning, Yeah. but you don't want it jiggly in the middle. I made the muffins yesterday, and it only takes about 20 minutes for the muffins to be done. Well, let's get going. Let's do our pumpkin first, if that's okay. Okay. I always like to put it on the bottom. It just makes my life, <laughs> just makes my life a little bit easier. Okay, so, so the whole can? Yep, 15 ounces. And this is pumpkin puree, not pumpkin pie filling. Yes. Okay. And because a Corona pumpkin is a little hard to find, so. Yeah, and it's all time. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you want pumpkin right now, go grab it while it's still available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we're just gonna add in four eggs. There we go. And then I'll let you add the others while I mix. Okay, so then we're going two, is this two cups of sugar? Two cups, yep. Yep. 
Now it sounds like a lot, but you got a lot of pumpkin in there, so yeah. you need some sweetness. And it's for a whole cake. Yes. So that's good. And then oil, we've just got one cup of vegetable oil yep. that we'll dump in there. Now you can put this in like your stand mixer, or, yeah. you know, but we're just doing it this way by hand because sometimes it's more fun that way. Right, we'll yeah. work out while you are go, getting ready. Go, go, <laughs> So now we've got to add some seasonings to it. We are gonna do three teaspoons of cinnamon. So it seems like a lot, but remember this is a big cake. Yes. And then we're also gonna do one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. So if you don't have pumpkin pie spice, Hi, hi. You can add in a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cloves. Um, if you Google how to make your own pumpkin spice, pie spice, it's super easy. Yes. Okay, and then we've got to add in some baking powder, some baking soda. So let's yep. see, baking powder, I've got two teaspoons. Nice. And then baking soda, we've got one teaspoon. And then just a little bit of salt, one teaspoon of salt. Nice. Okay, mix that in. And then our last one is the flour. I'll bounce it to you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, okay, I'm so gonna mix. It's just two cups of flour, which may, means this is gonna be a really moist cake. Nice. Which is what I like. Yeah. It's almost a, almost like fudgy, kind yeah. of. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. I love like the dense, Pumpkin. I don't know. It's just so good. Yes. All right. Mixing this in. <laughs> you almost need a bigger bowl. I <laughs> probably do. Sorry, I'm getting flour all over you. Totally fine. Oop, and, and the floor. myself, <laughs> and the floor, and everything. Just gotta get those sides, there we go. That's how you know it's good. Maybe it's a sign I should use a mixer. It's fine. Okay. There okay, you go. break, Looking your good. turn, Kay. your turn. Okay. Muscles. Why, why you're using your muscles? I am going to spray the pan with a nonstick cooking spray. You can butter it and flour it, but this is the lazy way, and I just love using pans. We were go. talking about before we started filming too, this is such a moist cake with a lot of, it's got the oil and the pumpkin, so it isn't going to be too sticky, so that's why you're okay to use pan. Yeah. And then dump it in there. Dump that. I'll grab a spoon to help Thank get you. the edges. You got that okay? Yeah. We'll lick out the rest of that later. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll do that off camera. Yes. <laughs> okay. Then I'm just gonna spread this around. It's not a very thick layer. No. But it will it cook will up. Cook up. Yeah. Yep, it yeah. gets nice and puffy. I'm just gonna try and even it before I start spreading. How's it looking? You Perfect. Okay. Yep. You're okay. ready to bake. Yep. I feel good about it. Okay. Now that is all spread and even, we're gonna cook it at 350 degrees for about what 20, 25 minutes. Yep. 25 to 30 minutes. Okay. Perfect. 25 to 30. All right. So came out of the oven. We let it cool for like I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. You don't want it really, really hot because <laughs> your frosting will melt. So you want it to cool pretty much all the way. Yeah. So now we're gonna make our delicious cream cheese frosting that will go on top, which this is what makes the recipe <laughs> amazing. You're a frosting I girl. also love frosting. Yes, Might does. be my favorite food. Yep. But, okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's make some frosting. All right, so we're gonna start with a, a cup of butter or two sticks of butter. They're at least room temperature, maybe a little bit softer. So yes. start with that. Okay, then you have a whole block or eight ounces of cream cheese. It is softened a little bit in there. Okay, there we go. Start mixing that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Now you don't want it melted because you want it a little bit thicker frosting. So as you are mixing that, I'm yep. gonna add in your um, vanilla. So like what? One teaspoon of vanilla? Two, ta two teaspoons. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Mm, I love vanilla. Okay. And Kay. then as you're mixing that, we'll just slowly add in powder add in sugar. sugar. So it's about three cups. I'm gonna slowly add it. Okay, it is really thick, so we're just gonna add just a little bit of milk just to thin it out just a little bit. So I don't know, like fourth a cup or so? Yeah, two okay. tablespoons and then just kind of play with it, see what you need. Yeah. Kristen, do you want a beater? Yeah, you want me to lick that off for you? <laughs> Uh, when I cook it myself, I leave a ton of frosting on the beaters so I can <laughs> lick it. Mm -hmm. Our mom always used to let us lick the beaters. I know, it was my favorite. There we 
There we go. Gotta hit, hit the frosting off. <laughs> All right, as she goes and washes those, I'm gonna start putting the frosting on. Looks good, Kate. Oh man. <laughs> it's all Kristen it's, can do to I not know. lick this right now. Lick it, lick it. No, I'm fine. Okay, we are done with this one. So we're gonna start with a quarter cup of pump, uh, pumpkin puree. Nice. I love this because if you just have a little bit left over, yeah. this is a perfect recipe. This is like. a really good recipe. Exactly. Okay, so usually we'll double like usually it's a third of a cup, but because we're just making it one, it's like one sixth of a cup of yeah. milk. Just a little bit of milk. A little bit. And then we've got a half teaspoon of cinnamon and then a half teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. And then we're gonna throw in about a cup of vanilla ice cream. So, whoa, whoa. just a couple scoops. Good? Good. Okay. Okay, now this is like my favorite thing in the world. This is why I wanted to show you a single serving too, because it is just the best little blender and I love it so much and it blends better than all my other blenders. So, and I have a lot of blenders. There we go. So, Ninja, Ninja single serving. I'll put it uh, down below in the description for you guys if you are interested, because it will just blend it awesome. Ready? Here we go. Good enough. Nice. Okay. 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 So then, you just get it opened up. Oh, man, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I know, I love it, right? You wanna try it? Yes. All right. Do you need whipped cream on top? Yes, I do. Are you ready? Yeah, put it on my suit. I will. Cool. Oh, I'm sure they do. How is it? It literally tastes like pumpkin pie. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for Thanksgiving. <laughs> cool. Me too. That's like a cold pumpkin pie. That's so good. That Which is, is so the way good. I prefer it. So. Me too. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, well this one is done. This is one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is really easy, so we're just gonna jump into it. You wanna start us off? Yes, I will. Okay. Okay, this is one of the easiest recipes because it's literally just dump and go. So we're mm -hmm. just gonna start dumping things. Yes. That's okay. <laughs> so first we're gonna do half a cup. This is white chocolate chips all melted together. Yes. I'm just gonna dump it right in. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna add our crumbs. This is three fourths cup of ginger snap cookie crumbs. Nice. Now and I crumbled these. I put them in like a freezer bag and just got my rolling pin nice. and kind of went. Went to town. <laughs> That's kind of a good way to release some holiday I know, stress. Right? right? And then three fourths cup of graham crackers all crushed up. Perfect. Here, I'll let you start mixing it. Okay. Things, okay. Yes. Then we have about a half a cup of pumpkin puree. I'm just going to kind of dump it in there for you. Actually, want to help? help. Me? Thanks. Yeah. Perfect. And then two tablespoons of powdered sugar. And then a fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon. Give it a little bit of, you yeah, know, a little spice kick. in there. And the very last thing is just four ounces of cream cheese. So I'm gonna let you scoop the that out. The best ingredient of exactly. them all. And we melted that yes. just to make our lives a lot easier when Oops, sorry, making the filling. Oh, you're fine. All right, then Stir you're just gonna it mix it in. up really good. Mm. That smells like I know. <laughs> Thanksgiving. <laughs> that smells so good. Awesome, awesome stirring. Okay, you will notice it's a little bit gritty, but that's okay because it's full yes. of cookies and crumbs. Mm -hmm. So we are going to cover this up and throw it in the fridge for about an hour just until it cools yes. so we can actually make like the truffle mm -hmm. shape. So throwing this in the fridge. Okay, so we just pulled this out of the fridge and so now we're going to make them into the truffles. So we have two cups of melted white chocolate chips mm -hmm. and then just a few extra cookies that we've crumbled. The ginger snap cookies. The ginger snap yes. cookies. And then we just have a little, a smaller cookie scoop. And so you can roll them out using your hands, but that was a very good roll. That's okay, they're truffles. They don't have to be perfect. Yeah, but they'll taste good. Yes, I, f I love the cookie scooper. It makes yes, it a whole it lot does. easier. So I'm gonna take it and then just put it into the chocolate. And just cover it with chocolate. Yes. And then pull it out. Now, if you mm, don't want to make the perfect. whole entire truffle, 
you can easily just drizzle it yes. on with chocolate too. So yeah, and it will still look super pretty. Exactly. So while your white chocolate is still soft, you're going to want to garnish them with just a little bit of the crushed ginger snap cookies. Just give a little pop. Yeah, I like it. It's cute. Perfect. All right, after you garnish it, you're gonna stick it in the fridge or freezer just until it hardens, just to make it a lot easier to eat. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys, we're all done with this one. Let's move on to the next one. So we're gonna start with a fourth a cup of butter. And it's supposed to be room temperature, but we kinda <laughs> cheat and microwave it, and it's just how it is. Just nuke so. it for a second, exactly. you're good. Then we're gonna move to a fourth cup of olive oil. All right, what's next, what do we got? So, oh, gotcha. I'll start mixing this. And then let's do the cup of sugar. Okay, so we have one cup of sugar here. There you go. And Sorry. maybe pumpkin next? Yes. All right, so we're gonna do one cup of pumpkin. So this usually comes with like, what? Um, almost two cups, so mm -hmm. we're gonna, again, kind of eyeball it. Can I use your spoon? Yep. Awesome. And be sure to get the pumpkin puree, not the pumpkin pie filling. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. Now let's add the flour. So this is an awesome measuring cup. <laughs> it's one and a half cups of flour here. So we're just gonna slowly dump that in. And then just add a teaspoon of our baking powder. The thing I like about Instant Pot desserts, I've tried cookies and brownies in there, is the texture. It's true, that w it, this would be similar to a pumpkin pie. It is like pie. a pumpkin pie, yeah, yeah. Oops. Okay, you mix that all in. We're just gonna add just a little bit of salt. It's like a teaspoon of salt. I mostly just like to kind of eyeball it again. I eyeball a lot. Mm -hmm. And then just one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Smells good. It smells does. like it the holidays. It smells like pumpkin. All right, you ready for this? We should have done this when we did the liquid, but we're adding it now. <laughs> it's fine. It is. It all mixes. This is one of those recipes you just kind of throw it all together and it will work out just fine. Okay, looking good. We forgot the eggs. We're gonna add those. <laughs> okay, we're gonna add eggs. We do know how to cook. The Instant Pot is forgiving, I will it say that. I feel like so many, of, so many Instant Pot recipes can kind of just be mixed and the pressure magic does the work for just you. cooks everything evenly. All right. Let's, let's see your skills, see if we can mix that all together. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm so excited, one, to not only show you how to make the pumpkin bread, but to show you these awesome silicone molds that I got. Usually I kind of struggle with things that go in the Instant Pot, but these are awesome. So it comes with two of them. And the recipe that we're um, making today, only you only have to use one of them. So we're gonna put one side. So my trick with this is that you have to spray it really well or it will stick to it. So we're gonna take some cooking spray and just spray it Go to lot. town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, if you can see, it has lots of different lines and curves to it. You just wanna make sure that you spray each individual one so it won't stick. There we go, on the outside too. And that makes it so pretty when you pull it out and yes. it has this design on it. It's fun. Okay, so now we're just gonna very carefully, we'll move this up so you guys can see, <laughs> pour that into it, all right? Okay. So I kind of just did chunks at a time, just going around the instant pot. Okay. Oh, sorry, do you want me to pour it? Do you want to hold it? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you hold it, and I'm just gonna gently pour it in. All right, and then it kind of just, there we go. Two-man job. Yes, it is. We should always be you two women do it in the kitchen. Kristen, Kristen's made it on her own. I have. I just keep, it just goes a little slower. All right. Yeah, that fills it about to the top. I know, so you wanna make sure that you have about an, an inch um, from the top because it will expand. Okay, so if you can see right now, the, the goal is you want to cover the whole thing. So I'm just going to kind of bounce it a little bit, make sure all the air bubbles are out, and so it will go into all those little cracks and crevices, so. All right, what do you think, looking good? Yeah. Well, oh, this will be okay. Okay, so now when you're making desserts in the Instant Pot, you wanna make sure that whatever you're cooking, it's kind of sealed, because you don't want a ton of liquid in there. So we're gonna use some foil and cover it the best that we can and to try and keep some of the liquid some of the out. moisture mm -hmm. out. Now I have seen people, they put like a paper towel down first and then they do it. 
But this one, because it's made out of the silicone, I, I did the foil a few times and it worked just fine. So that's what we're gonna do. So you just wanna make sure that you try and seal it the very best that you can. All right. Okay, so now we have this. Let's put, um, I like to do about one cup of water in the bottom of the Instant Pot. So I have my little trivet that the Instant Pot came with. I'll put that in the bottom. And then let's put the one cup of water right in the Instant Pot. Nice. And I'm just gonna slowly just put this in. Ooh. All nice. right. Okay, I think we're ready. So I'm gonna put the lid on. That little jingle is <laughs> great. Okay, so you wanna make sure your little knob, you wanna turn that to ceiling. That's probably the most important step yeah. here. So this one is the Instant Pot Duo, so it has a pressure cook button. If you have the, the Lux, you'll have a manual button. They do the same thing. So we're gonna push pressure cook button. And then because it's so thick and dense, we have to go up to 45 minutes. So we're cooking it for 45 minutes. That's how much you would have to cook it in the oven for. There we go. But you don't get the same texture in the oven as you do here. <laughs> okay, so while this is going, so it's right now it says 45 minutes, and then in a few seconds, there we go. It's gonna say on. That means you did everything right. Now you can just kind of walk away from the Instant Pot. There you go. Hey, I'm excited. All right, so when your Instant Pot bread is done, I let mine sit in here for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can turn it to venting and do a quick release, or like I did, you can just let it sit. So I'm gonna turn mine to venting and all the pressure's out, so the lid will just come right off. Oh, well, you can't see it yet. <laughs> All right, so here's the hard part. Now, if you have a trivet that has little handles, that would work best. But if not, you just have to watch me suffer through this for a minute. <laughs> this is obviously not Kristen's Instant Pot because she would have the proper <laughs> gear. It's fine. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm we're gonna take the foil off. Yeah, you want to? Is it, you know, let's put it down. We'll take the foil off. There we go. Okay, now it looks like Literally pumpkin bread, huh? It does. So because we did the cooking spray, it should work okay. Do you want to put that on and flip it over? That would be great. This is a lot of pressure. Here we go. I kind of just like push it down, make sure it's out, and just pull it off. Ready? Ooh. Nice. Okay, so here's the trick. You want to put the butter on while it's hot. So we're gonna use like a little brush and just brush on the butter. And then while I'm brushing it on, Elise is gonna show you the topping of it. Okay, super simple topping. Fourth cup of sugar, fourth cup of brown sugar, and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. So we're just gonna mix that together. Nice. Mm, I love all those toppings. I know, and cinnamon, nothing goes better with pumpkin than cinnamon. Right, this is where it gets like the, the snickerdoodle name from is like the cinnamon sugar mixture. Yeah. Now, as you're doing the butter, just make sure you get it in all the little crevices. Now, if you don't have one of these little bunt pans, you could also make it in like a little loaf pan or one of those stackable pans that I've showed in another video. I'll put a link in the description for you. All right, how's it looking? Good, it's Good. crumbly. Yeah, I think I'm almost done here with my butter. So you can get really fancy and put this on a cooling rack so all your cinnamon and sugar will fall underneath it, but this is just, for me and my family, and I really don't care if it's fancy or not. So we're just gonna sprinkle it on just like this. All right, you ready? Okay. Okay, so I actually just like to use my fingers. You wanna help oh, me? okay. And so we're just gonna lightly just kind of like brush it on and I kind of like to pat it on, pat it in, so it will stay on. I love the design of it. I know, it looks so pretty. It's kind of fun, huh? Nice festive dessert. Exactly. All right, guys, I hope you like these recipes. Now you have the pumpkin recipes. If you need some idea for Thanksgiving recipes, I got you there. All right, we'll see ya.